January 23, Eliphaz's second response to Job. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, A wise man wouldn't answer with such empty talk. You are nothing but a windbag. The wise don't engage in empty chatter. What good are such words? Have you no fear of God, no reverence for him? Your sins are telling your mouth what to say. Your words are based on clever deception. Your own mouth condemns you, not I. Your own lips testify against you. Were you the first person ever born? Were you born before the hills were made? Were you listening at God's secret counsel? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we don't? What do you understand that we do not? On our side are aged, gray-haired men, much older than your father. Is God's comfort too little for you? Is his gentle word not enough? What has taken away your reason? What has weakened your vision that you turn against God and say all these evil things? Can any mortal be pure? Can anyone born of a woman be just? Look, God does not even trust the angels. Even the heavens are not absolutely pure in his sight. How much less pure is a corrupt and sinful person with a thirst for wickedness? If you will listen, I will show you. I will answer you from my own experience. And it is confirmed by the reports of wise men who have heard the same thing from their fathers, from those to whom the land was given long before any foreigners arrived. The wicked writhe in pain throughout their lives. Years of trouble are stored up for the ruthless. The sound of terror rings in their ears, and even on good days they fear the attack of the destroyer. They dare not go out into the darkness for fear they will be murdered. They wander around saying, Where can I find bread? They know their day of destruction is near. That dark day terrifies them. They live in distress and anguish, like a king preparing for battle. For they shake their fists at God, defying the Almighty, holding their strong shields, they defiantly charge against him. These wicked people are heavy and prosperous, their wastes bulge with fat. But their cities will be ruined. They will live in abandoned houses that are ready to tumble down. Their riches will not last, and their wealth will not endure. Their possessions will no longer spread across the horizon. They will not escape the darkness. The burning sun will wither their shoots, and the breath of God will destroy them. Let them no longer fool themselves by trusting in empty riches, for emptiness will be their only reward. Like trees, they will be cut down in the prime of life. Their branches will never again be green. They will be like a vine whose grapes are harvested too early, like an olive tree that loses its blossoms before the fruit can form. For the godless are barren. Their homes, enriched through bribery, will burn. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Their womb produces deceit. Job's Fifth Speech A Response to Eliphaz Then Job spoke again. I have heard all this before. What miserable comforters you are! Won't you ever stop blowing hot air? What makes you keep on talking? I could say the same things if you were in my place. I could spout off criticism and shake my head at you. But if it were me, I would encourage you. I would try to take away your grief. Instead, I suffer if I defend myself, and I suffer no less if I refuse to speak. Oh, God, you have ground me down and devastated my family. As if to prove I have sinned, you've reduced me to skin and bones. My gaunt flesh testifies against me. God hates me and angrily tears me apart. He snaps his teeth at me and pierces me with his eyes. People jeer and laugh at me. They slap my cheek in contempt. A mob gathers against me. God has handed me over to sinners. He has tossed me into the hands of the wicked. I was living quietly until he shattered me. He took me by the neck and broke me in pieces. Then he set me up as his target, and now his archers surround me. His arrows pierce me without mercy. The ground is wet with my blood. Again and again he smashes against me, charging at me like a warrior. I wear burlap to show my grief. My pride lies in the dust. My eyes are red with weeping. Dark shadows circle my eyes. Yet I have done no wrong, and my prayer is pure. 
O earth, do not conceal my blood. Let it cry out on my behalf. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is there on high. My friends scorn me, but I pour out my tears to God. I need someone to mediate between God and me, as a person mediates between friends. For soon I must go down that road from which I will never return. Job continues to defend his innocence. My spirit is crushed, and my life is nearly snuffed out. The grave is ready to receive me. I am surrounded by mockers. I watch how bitterly they taunt me. You must defend my innocence, O God, since no one else will stand up for me. You have closed their minds to understanding. But do not let them triumph. They betray their friends for their own advantage, so let their children faint with hunger. God has made a mockery of me among the people. They spit in my face. My eyes are swollen with weeping, and I am but a shadow of my former self. The virtuous are horrified when they see me. The innocent rise up against the ungodly. The righteous keep moving forward, and those with clean hands become stronger and stronger. As for all of you, come back with a better argument, though I still won't find a wise man among you. My days are over. My hopes have disappeared. My heart's desires are broken. These men say that night is day. They claim that the darkness is light. What if I go to the grave and make my bed in darkness? What if I call the grave my father and the maggot my mother or my sister? Where then is my hope? Can anyone find it? No, my hope will go down with me to the grave. We will rest together in the dust. Bildad's second response to Job. Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, How long before you stop talking? Speak sense if you want us to answer. Do you think we are mere animals? Do you think we are stupid? You may tear out your hair in anger, but will that destroy the earth? Will it make the rocks tremble? Surely the light of the wicked will be snuffed out. The sparks of their fire will not glow. The light in their tent will grow dark. The lamp hanging above them will be quenched. The confident stride of the wicked will be shortened. Their own schemes will be their downfall. The wicked walk into a net. They fall into a pit. A trap grabs them by the heel. A snare holds them tight. A noose lies hidden on the ground. A rope is stretched across their path. Terrors surround the wicked and trouble them at every step. Hunger depletes their strength, and calamity waits for them to stumble. Disease eats their skin, death devours their limbs. They are torn from the security of their homes and are brought down to the king of terrors. The homes of the wicked will burn down, burning sulfur rains on their houses. Their roots will dry up and their branches will wither. All memory of their existence will fade from the earth. No one will remember their names. They will be thrust from light into darkness, driven from the world. They will have neither children nor grandchildren children, nor any survivor in the place where they lived. People in the West are appalled at their fate. People in the East are horrified. They will say, this was the home of a wicked person, the place of one who rejected God.